Hi Church family, Pastor Dan here and to visitors, welcome to our devotional channel here at Rockhampton Baptist. Now I love watching on, on YouTube some of those Domino's videos. You know the ones where it starts you know, with one or two and all of a sudden it breaks into this really large picture that I'm sure that the creator has spent days if not weeks on, on creating you know, different colour dominoes and all sorts of things. There's really an, an impressive amount of videos on these sorts of things. Now, I love it how it, as it comes there and does that. And uh, you know, some of them, they have different transitions into different images and, and different sorts of things. And that's really um, kind of interesting as they go. You, you're trying to anticipate of what, what the image is going to be or what it's going to reveal. And there's that transition of color or the type of dominoes. And as we get to uh, the chapter in Hebrews here, what, we're, what we are, we're at one of these transitions. We're at this point where we're, the author is about to break into his main argument in the book of Hebrews and, and he kind of gives us a glimpse or an image of what it is going to be before and transitions into this section. And he starts the, uh, the passage with, so then, which goes, okay, well, what is spoken about in the first four chapters, so then, because you understand that, let me break into my main argument. And so it's so then, since you understand that Jesus is greater than the angels, that Jesus was a man, he was human on earth, we know that Jesus was greater than Moses, and we know that we can come to him and, and there's a sense that Jesus will provide us eternal rest. So since then you know this, you can come to this passage and understand what I'm going to break into. So let me read you chapter 4, verses 14 to 16. It says, So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weakness, and he faced all the same testings we do. Yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God, there we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Now this passage can be an encouraging passage and really used, but there is so much depth of what the author is actually you know, giving us here. As I said, this is almost like a glimpse. It's a transition into the main argument. And he kind of gives us hints of what he's going to go into. And so to explain all of this to detail, I can't do it in this video. But over the coming weeks and, and maybe months, we'll, we'll start to unpack these sort of different elements there. But what I can draw your attention to is one thing is that Jesus here is described as the great high priest. It's the first time the author has done that in, in the book. And so he draws upon this language, this language of high priest. Uh, it kind of invades the rest of the, uh, the book of Hebrews. It, it kind of keeps showing up in the letter. And this is a high priest, as this passage said, of one that entered into heaven. That Jesus, as the high priest, entered into heaven. So it's not an earthly high priest. He didn't serve in the earthly tabernacle or the temple, as the Jewish system did. And as at this time when it was being read, the temple was still being used. This is not the high priestly service that Jesus had. It was heavenly. And this high priest is Jesus. The author clarifies that, that, that Jesus is the high priest. It's not somebody else that he's talking about. It's not some great high priest from the past. It is Jesus that serves this role as the great high priest. And he says, because we have Jesus, who is all these things, high priest, the, the, you know, he's greater than Moses and all those sort of things that he's unpacked before. Because we have this, we can hold firmly to what, it, what we believe. Now, the author will unpack later exactly what he means in this, but we can hold firm because we understand this truth. And we can because we understand that Jesus is one who's, who's had the same weaknesses and had to experience the same weaknesses that we have had. Similar testings that he's gone through. And yet, as he did that, he did not sin. And because of what he did in not sinning, because of what he did to offer the sacrifice is that we can come to the throne of grace. 
you know, this gracious kind of throne that it draws upon here. Because of what he did, we can come to this throne and we can receive mercy and we can find grace. So without unpacking everything, today I want you to just focus on that you can come to God and you can receive mercy and you can find grace and allow him to show you the great Domino's image that he has for you. But start there. Come today. Receive God's mercy and find his grace. Let me pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. It continues to to demonstrate uh, and show us exactly what you did. Lord, help us today to come to you, Lord, in all, everything that we have and all that we have going on to, to, to just find your mercy and grace. Allow us to sit in your presence because you have paved the way for us. Amen. Now keep walking with God. Let him talk to you as you engage in the Bible and allow him to speak as you trust in him. Keep understanding these words that he's given us. Keep understanding his instructions and look for opportunities first to receive his mercy and grace on our lives and then to bless others with that same mercy and grace today. We'll see you soon.